Good evening, everybody. How are you? Hi, Jihad. Uh, how are you this fine Friday evening? I hope wherever you are... Oh, look, I'm just going to move myself around just a little bit. I hope wherever you are, all over the world, you have had a good day so far. If it's your morning first off, then I hope your morning has started off nicely with a nice breakfast. And um, I have just come straight from rehearsals for my next show. So um, that's been very exciting. I got home literally half an hour ago. So I got home and rushed around and set up everything so that we don't have this, quite the same blamage as we had the other night where I lost the internet and I was at the theater and things didn't quite go exactly according to plan. So it's gonna be a short and sweet one I am doing great, thank you very much. By the way, congratulations, Jihad. If you are in Vienna and um, you get to watch this, a very dear friend and acting colleague of mine, uh, Jihad, does his own show, which is called My Jihad. And I don't know, I don't know, Jihad, whether you've got um, a, a website or a Facebook page specifically dedicated to that. 
but um, he is a Palestinian actor, and in his one-man show, he talks about his experiences being a Pal Palestinian actor, excuse me, and also actually with the name Jihad, which, you know, for, for many people has somewhat negative connotations, but he, his name is Jihad, and Jihad could probably write in the comments below what Jihad actually means. And it means not anything necessarily negative. It's just turned into a negative thing. So this strange shadow on my face today. And that light is very bright in my face. But give me two seconds. I'm going to put it down a little bit. Because everybody who's listening in, but they can't see me, but they can listen to my beautiful voice. The light of the lamp was shining in my face. Right. So here we are. Good evening, one and all. It is lovely to see you. I am going to read to you a very short evening this evening. It is the 135th night of 1001 Arabian Nights. My name is Joanna Godwin Seidel. I am the director of Vienna Theatre Project. We have a show coming up. We started rehearsing this week. We have a show coming up in Theater Drachengasse in Vienna um, starting on the 21st of September. And it's called Nina Simone's Four Women. It's got four amazing, strong, exciting, gorgeous women in it on stage with beautiful, beautiful voices. So do make sure that if you're in Vienna, you can catch them because I promise you they are an absolute treat. So um, without further ado, I'm just going to start reading so that I can then go to bed because I'm quite tired. I've been rehearsing since 11 o'clock this morning and got home as I said, half an hour ago. So, 1001 Arabian Nights. Now, when it was the 135th night, Shahrazad said, it has reached me, O auspicious king, that the Chamberlain eunuch cried to the old woman, I know neither slave girl nor anyone else, and none shall enter here without my searching him according to the king's command. Then, quoth she, feigning to be angry, I thought thee a man of sense and good breeding, but if thou be changed, I will let the princess know of it and tell her how thou hinderest her slave girl and she cried out to Taj al-Muluk, saying, Pass on, O damsel. So he passed on into the vestibule as she bade him, whilst the eunuch was silent and said no more. The prince counted five doors and entered the sixth, where he found the princess Dunya standing and awaiting him. As soon as she saw him, she knew him and clasped him to her breast, and he clasped her to his bosom. Presently, the old woman came into them. Having made a pretext to dismiss the princess's slave girls for fear of disgrace. And the lady Dunya said to her, Be thou our doorkeeper, so she and Taj al Muluk abode alone together and ceased not kissing and embracing and twining leg with leg till dawn. When day drew near, she left him and shutting the door upon him, passed into another chamber where she sat down as was her wont whilst her slave women came into her and she attended to their affairs and conversed with them. Then she said to them, Go forth from me now, for I wish to amuse myself in privacy. So they withdrew, and she betook herself to Taj al-Maluk, and the old woman brought them food, of which they ate, and returned to amorous dalliance till dawn. Then, the door was locked upon him, as on the day before, and they ceased not to do thus for a whole month. This is how it fared with Taj al-Muluk 
and the Lady Dunya. But as regards the Wazir and Aziz, for they found that the prince had gone to the palace of the king's daughter and there delayed all the while, they concluded that he would never return from it and that he was lost forever. And Aziz said to the Wazir, O oh my father, what shall we do? He replied, O oh my son, this is a difficult matter. And except we return to his sire and tell him, he will blame us thereafter. And therefore. So they made ready at once and forthright set out for the green land and the country of the two columns and sought Suleiman Shah's capital. And they traversed the valleys night and day till they went in to the king and acquainted him with what had befallen his son and how from the time he entered the princess's palace they had heard no news of him. At this the king was as though the day of doom had dawned for him and regret was sore upon him and he proclaimed a holy war throughout his realm. After which he sent forth his host without the town and pitched tents for them and took up his abode in his pavilion. Whilst the levies came from all parts of the kingdom for his subjects loved him by reason of his great justice and beneficence. Then he marched with an army walling the horizon and departed in quest of his son. Thus far concerning them. But as regards Taj al-Muluk and the Lady Dunya, the two remained as they were half a year's time, whilst every day they redoubled in mutual affection and love and longing and passion and desire so pressed on Taj al-Muluk that at last he opened his mind and said to her, No, O beloved of my heart and vitals, that the love I abide with thee, the more love and longing and passion and desires increase on me, for that I have not yet fulfilled the whole of my wish. Asked she, what then wouldst thou have, O light of my eyes and fruit of my vitals? If thou desire aught beside kissing and embracing and entwining of legs with legs, do what pleaseth thee, for by Allah no partner hath any part in us. But he answered, It is not that that I wish. I would fain acquaint thee with my true story. Know then that I am no merchant, nay, I am a king, the son of a king, and my father's name is the supreme king, Suleiman Shah who sent his wazir ambassador to thy father to, to demand thee in marriage for me. But when the news came to thee, thou wouldst not consent. Then he told her his past from first to last. Nor is there any avail in a twice told tale. And he added, And now I wish to return to my father, that he may send an ambassador to thy sire, to demand thee in wedlock for me, so we may be at ease. When she heard these words, she joyed with great joy, because it suited with her own wishes, and they passed the night on in this understanding. But it so befell by the decree of destiny that sleep overcame them that night above all nights, and they remained till the sun had risen. Now, 
At this hour, King Shariman was sitting on his cushion of estate with his emirs and grandees before him when a syndic of the goldsmiths presented himself between his hands carrying a large box. And he advanced and opening it in, in presence of the king brought out therefrom a casket of fine work worth an hundred thousand dinars. For that which was therein of precious stones, rubies and emeralds beyond the competence of any sovereign on earth to procure. When the king saw this, he marvelled at its beauty and turning to the chief eunuch, him with whom the old woman had had to do, said to him, O Kafur, take this casket and wend with it to the princess Dunya. The castrato took the casket and repairing to the apartment of the king's daughter found the door shut and the old woman lying asleep on the threshold. Whereupon said he, what, sleeping at this hour? When the old woman heard the eunuch's voice, she started from sleep and was terrified and said to him, wait till I fetch the key. Excuse me while I turn the page. Then she went forth and fled for her life. Such was her case. But as regards the epicene, he, seeing her alarm, lift the door of its hinge pins and, entering, found the Lady Dunya with her arms around the neck of Taj al-Muluk and both fast asleep. At this sight he was confront confounded and was preparing to return to the king when the princess awoke and seeing him was terrified and changed colour and waxed pale and said to him, O Kafur, veil thou what Allah hath veiled. But he replied, I cannot conceal aught from the king. And locking the door on them, returned to Shah Riman who asked him, Hast thou given the casket to the princess? Answered he, Take the casket, here it is, for I cannot conceal aught from thee. Know that I found a handsome young man by the side of the princess, and they two asleep in one bed and in mutual embrace. The king commanded them be brought into the presence and said to them, what manner of thing is this? And being violently enraged, seized a dagger and was about to strike Taj al-Muluk with it, when the Lady Dunya threw herself upon him and said to her father, slay me before thou slayest him. The king reviled her and commanded her to be taken back to her chamber. Then he turned to Taj al-Muluk and said to him, Woe to thee! Whence art thou? Who is thy father? And what hast thou emboldened thee to debauch my daughter? Replied the prince, Know, O king, that if thou put me to death, thou art a lost man, and thou and all in thy dominions will repeat, repent the deed. Quoth the king, How so? And quoth Taj al-Muluk, No, that I am the son of King Suleiman Shah, and ere thou knowest it, he will be upon thee with horse and foot. When King Shah Riman heard these words, he would have deferred killing Taj al-Muluk and would rather put him in prison till he should look into the truth of his words. But his wazir said to him, O king of the age, it is my opinion that thou take haste to slay this gallows bird 
who dares debauch the daughters of kings. So the king cried to the hensman, strike off his head, for he is a traitor. Accordingly, the headsman took him and bound him fast and raised his hand to the emirs, signing to consult them a first and a second signal, thinking thereby to gain time in this matter. But the king cried in anger to him, How long will thou consult others? If thou consult them again, I will strike off thine own head. So the headsman raised his hand till the hair of his armpit showed and was about to smite his neck. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of day and ceased to say her permitted say. Good evening, Saman. How are you doing? It's lovely to have your greeting. So, dear friends, um, I can't tell what time it is because I can't tell that on my phone. It was an absolute pleasure reading for you this evening. I hope you... Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> I know, right? Talk about a cliffhanger. When I read that, I was like, okay, there is absolutely no way I can read the next night whether I want to or not, because it is such a great cliffhanger. So it's like a it's like an episode of Dallas or Dynasty or something. It's a brilliant cliffhanger. So and we've got to wait until Tuesday. <laughs> Excuse me. We've got to wait until Tuesday to find out what on earth. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm so excited about it already. We've got to wait until Tuesday, unless of course you have a book and you want to find out yourself or go onto the internet. What happens? Next, is Taj al-Muluk going to get his head chopped off? Or is somebody going to jump in at the last minute and save the day? Exciting stuff, huh? So, uh, and you never know, right? With, with 1001 Nights, the thing is, you, uh, Game of Thrones, thank you, Saman, exactly, Game of Thrones. With 1001 Arabian Nights, you never know what is going to come next. And just when you think it might be something innocent, it turns out to be something absolutely terrible. And then when you think it's going to be something really terrible, it suddenly becomes something really innocent. So it's going to be very exciting to find out what happens next. Dear friends, I send you many, many, many blessings. Um, wherever you are in the world, it is always an absolute pleasure for both Saman and I to read for you. And, um, and I have otherwise absolutely nothing more to say. I hope you are all taking care of yourselves wherever you are and um, keeping safe and um, enjoying the sunshine if you're somewhere where it's sunny. Because it was. It's been really beautiful today here in Vienna. I wish you many, many blessings, many greetings. We will see us, that's what they say in German, wir sehen uns, wir sehen uns, we will see us, we will see each other next Tuesday with the glorious and wonderful and very beautifully voiced Saman Gerard, who will be carrying on and letting us know, and I'm not going to read it, I'm not going to, I'm not going to check out um, what happens next. So um, I left it at that cling half cliffhanger because I just didn't want to go further, I wanted it to be a complete surprise. We'll find out on Tuesday what happens next. Stay 